Do you know what this guy right here is? That's one of the most underutilized and underappreciated apps in all of Odudum. Dashboards can show us a ton of high level information so we can make better business decisions. And automations aside, one of the biggest reasons I hear that people get into Odoo is so that they can have all their information in one place. And why would you do that if you're not gonna use it? I mean, look at this thing. I can come in and I can see how many quotations I have, how many orders, revenue, average order. You can see top quotations, top sales orders. And then on top of that, I can come up here to these guys and I can filter down on salesperson. I can filter down on product category. There is so much that I can do here. Using the dashboard could easily be the difference between your company being a 1 million a year company or a 10 million a year company. The decisions you make are all based on the data you have at hand. So I'm really not exaggerating when I say this could be the difference for you. So stick around. We're gonna go ahead and build a brand new dashboard and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So because pretty much every business has sales, we're going to build this off of sales. Now a cool thing you need to know about dashboards is we can pull data from all these different places in Odoo and put them into one dashboard. So you can combine sales with shipments, with CRM. You can do a ton here. So we're gonna kind of build this out in three levels. So first, we're going to have a bit of a leaderboard for our sales teams. Then under that, we're gonna have a leaderboard for our salespeople. And under that, we're basically going to have a scorecard that can be filtered based on sales team or salesperson. So let's start out with our sales team leaderboard. To work with that, we need to come in, we're gonna get rid of that filter up top, and we're going to go ahead and group by our sales team here. And this is really all we need, so we're going to insert this in a spreadsheet, and it's going to be a blank spreadsheet. Now, what's one of our favorite things to do? Oh yeah, we like to copy other people's work. So let's duplicate a tab real quick. And then we're going to come into our dashboards, go to configuration, dashboards, and we're gonna go into sales and we're gonna edit this so that we can look at the spreadsheet view of this dashboard. So we're gonna copy most of the things that they do. We're gonna have a first sheet here called dashboard. That's going to be our dashboard. Behind that, we want to have a sheet for data. So we're gonna have a new sheet here. You can press plus and make as many sheets as you want. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these now. And then let's rename this guy data in case we need anything there or summary type data. So let's start working on our dashboard here. So the first thing that we want is a list of our top 10 sales teams in order. So let's go over to our example dashboard here and try and find something like that. So these guys right here, if we look at it, are based on a list. That's not what we want. We want something where it aggregates. So products should work for us. Yep, it looks like that runs on a pivot. So we wanna use that first. So let's go back over to our spreadsheet and we're going to say top 10 sales teams. Okay, and then we're gonna have team name and we're going to have sales amount. And I'll apologize real quick because I want this video to be short and to the point. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on formatting. I'm just going to show you how to get this to work. So coming back over to our example here, we really like this format. And so we could copy this formula and try and make it work for ourselves, but there's a quicker way to do this. So what we can do is for team name, we can come in here, go to insert, go to insert pivot, insert pivot cell, and go to the pivot we want. And I want this guy right here. Now I has got some helpful little tools here. I can come in here and currently it's referring to sales team ID one. If I wanna switch it to five, it'll tell me what that is. It gives me this list of available values. So I can back that off, put in a five, press enter, and now we've got pre-sales here. But we don't really wanna to refer to these by ID. We want to get the first one, then second one, third one, fourth one in the list when it's sorted by amount. So we're going to go back to our example dashboard and it looks like putting a pound sign in front of it will do this for us. So if we put a pound sign in front of the technical name of our field, we now get the first one. If I copy that down and I go for two, it gives me the second one. Third one isn't going to exist, but this gives us exactly what we're wanting here. Now, if we wanted to make this quicker, we could go ahead and insert a column to the left, come in, put one, equals this, plus one, bring it down just a ways, let's see, down there, got an extra one there, but then we could come in here, get this, 
refer to this and then oop, that's too far bring it down and now it refers to this and we're good now we want our sales amount so we're going to insert we're going to insert pivot insert pivot cell and we're going to grab the sales one and again because we want this in order instead of going by id we're going to come over here and check and it looks like we can just add a pound sign in front of the group by so if we come back in here go to this and we stick a pound sign in front of team id that should help us out and we'll want to bring this down the rest of the way so that it cleans this up so currently we're not referring to this to keep it nice and clean we're just saying it's always for the first one so that's kind of messy we want to clean that up go ahead and paste and it looks like we're good here now i'm going to add another sales team and another sale under that sales team real quick so that you can see that the order will change and that additional teams will be added as they fit into that top 10. so let's come over and duplicate this tab we're going to create a new sales team so configuration sales teams and it's going to be Andrew's test okay don't need a team leader or anything right now and we'll duplicate this and we're going to add another sale here so we're going to have a new one this is going to be andrew test customer okay and he is going to buy let's see let's go with acoustic block screens i want to make my studio a little bit better here i want 10 of these okay actually let's make it 100 so that this is just a really big sale and it'll stand out and it'll fit well above sales here so let's go in and make sure on other info our sales team is andrew's test let's save that confirm this and then let's go see how it affected our dashboard so we're coming in here i haven't refreshed yet let's go ahead and refresh and see what we got so you see we now have sales andrew's test and pre-sales so you may have noticed something annoying there we didn't set our sorting properly and Sadly, there doesn't seem to be a way to fix that once you've got the pivot in. So we're gonna create a new pivot real quick. So we're gonna come back into sales, go into our pivot table, get rid of this, go ahead and group by our sales team, okay? And we're good there. And then we can click right here to sort the way we want it to be sorted. And we should have done this previously, but we're going to insert this into our spreadsheet. It's our entitled one here. Go ahead and confirm and then we'll come back into our untitled spreadsheet here go to the dashboard and what we need to do is we need to change this to our second pivot table okay and i'm not going to be silly about this actually we're going to do this and then we'll copy this go ahead and paste down and you can see now that it's in the correct order. So make sure and sort your pivot tables before you insert them into the spreadsheet. Almost everything else can be changed about the pivot table after you're in the spreadsheet, but apparently sorting can't be. If somebody knows a way to get around that, please drop it in the comments below to help everybody out. So now let's go ahead and hop in and we wanna go back out to sales. And this time we're going to group by salesperson. So let's go in here, go to our pivot table, going to go and go to add custom group well actually it's already there salesperson this is looking good and i mean we've only got two right now so that's not great but let's make sure and sort by the total in the right way insert this into the spreadsheet and then we can pull on this for our next little table so let's hop into our dashboard and let's just copy this guy right here so we're going to say top 10 salespeople. and maybe that's one word i don't know i'll leave that up to you guys salesperson name sales amount okay and let's change this to our pivot number three and we want this to be user id you don't have to remember all this we obviously could have inserted it in another way but this works for us so we have artful dodger let's make sure this is good so user id and three and then we'll be able to pull this down copy that go all the way down and would you look at that that looks really good let's look at our pivot real quick so 48539 13997 this is great 
So we're starting to pick up speed now that we have different little templates to work from here. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and pull in some scorecards here and then we'll get to the filters. So hopping back over to our example, I like the idea of number of orders, our revenue and our average order. So let's go ahead and reproduce that real quick. So we'll need the count of our orders, the total revenue, and then we should be able to get average order by taking this divided by this. So we'll use our data tab for that. So because we don't have our count of orders, we're going to go back into our sales and do one more pivot here. So get rid of this, go ahead and grab our pivot view here. Don't really need a time period. We do need our total sales and we want our count as well here. Let's insert that into our spreadsheet. I'm titled spreadsheet here. Okay and we're in our entitled spreadsheet. Now we're going to pull these over into the data so that we can do some calculations on them and refer to them directly. So let's hop into our data tab. We're gonna do total sales amount. Revenue is a bit misleading to me because we're not in accounting yet. We're going to say total count of sales. Okay, and we're gonna say average sale amount. So let's go in and we're going to insert, insert pivot, insert pivot sale. We're gonna to go to sales orders and for our sales amount, we're gonna grab this guy. Love it, that's great, super easy. Go to insert, insert pivot, insert pivot sale, go to sales orders, our counts, super easy. And then we're going to do this, oops, equals this divided by this to get our average sale amount. Okay, let's get those in our dashboard here, which again, recognize this is probably gonna look kind of funky to some of you guys. You can clean it up later. So we're gonna say insert chart, and our chart right here is going to be a little scorecard, okay? And our key value is going to be in data. It's gonna be this guy right there, our total sales amount. And that's good for right now, we're going to confirm that and we've got our $62,537.62. Then we're going to give it a title and we're going to say total sales. Let's make this a little bit smaller so we have space for our other guys here. We can throw a color on this too if we want to. So we can say, hmm, I like me some green. Yeah, it's a little garish maybe, but we'll leave it. Okay, so just to make our lives easier, we're going to copy this, copy this again. Okay, let's change this guy here. So we're going to come in. We want our value now to be this guy. Okay, confirm that, that's good. And let's go into our design, change the title here to number of sales. And we're gonna go over, and we know this is just B3, so we'll do that instead. So. We're looking pretty good there. All right, so we're finally ready for our filters and then publishing this guy. So for our filters, we come up here and we're going to say, first we're gonna do a relational one here. So the label, we're going to call this sales team. The related model is going to be sales team. Okay, and yep. That's all good. We're going to save this. Now let's add in our salesperson. So we're going to say salesperson related model is going to be our users. Okay. And you can see we've got responsible user is not what we want. We want salesperson, 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 and salesperson. Yes. Go ahead and save that. And just because we can, we're going to add in our date here. So we're going to give ourselves month quarter, that's super helpful. And we're going to say period right here. Okay, and we're gonna automatically filter on the current period for the current month, just so we can have a starting point. So our date field here, we're going to say our order date is what we want on each of these. Again, this works across multiple models, so we need to be able to define this. Now we're finally ready to publish this guy and try it out. So let's go in here, let's rename this and call this sales dashboard. And then we're going to go to file and we're adding this to a dashboard. So dashboard name, sales dashboard is great. Dashboard section, we'll throw it into sales. So let's go out into our dashboards and look at this real quick. So we come in here 
and we go to configuration dashboards go to sales and we've got our sales dashboard we need to make sure that this is published okay so save that come back out to our dashboards and now we have this sales dashboard and we have these filters here so I'm gonna say this is for 2020 we don't have any sales so it gives us some problems here um, let's go for 2024 that's looking pretty good and it looks like somehow this guy got messed up which is always fun but not hard to fix so we'll go into sales go to my sales dashboard edit come into this guy double click to get into it easily change my key value come over here set it there confirm okay and then let's go back out to our dashboard make sure that we're good and it looks like we're much better now ah sorry guys I was editing and I realized I didn't show you how to do charts so let me do that real quick let's go back into sales real quick and we're gonna get right here make sure all our data is good then we can go to the chart view right here and this looks pretty good this is kind of sales by customer and then we can click insert in spreadsheet now we're gonna go to our dashboards here and go to sales dashboard and confirm and now we got that nice little chart there and the next time we go into our dashboard here if we refresh this you can see that we've got that chart in there and just so you can see it does work with our filters already if i look at all of our twist well all of our slacking off but we've got other orphan eight sales in that period if we go to artful dodger five sales and our chart still does update so that was a bit of a whirlwind adventure but now you know how to build your own dashboard if you have any questions about this, as always, drop them in the comments below. I'm here to help. Thank you so much for tuning in. It makes all the difference in the world for me. Hope you keep watching. Thanks.